welcome to Dog Talk. I'm Joanna Doe, and with me, as always, is applied animal behaviorist Claudia McAuliffe. Okay, well, what are we going to talk about first today? Well, we've got um, something really fun. We're going to talk about mouths. Okay. And we're especially going to talk about how the expression of the mouth tells us about how the dog is feeling. Mm -hmm. Okay, is that with these masks? You betcha. Oh, boy. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Surprise. Hey. <laughs> it's still us. <laughs> and it's not Halloween. No, it's not. Why are we wearing these? Well, that's a really good question, Jill. You know, humans are very good at reading the expressions of other humans, mm -hmm. and most of this we do quite unconsciously, and we form immediate opinions about that other person based on the expression on their face. Uh -huh. So right now, you know, I would say that you're looking pretty happy based on what I'm seeing. <laughs> <laughs> or hot. Or hot, <laughs> right, right. So um, maybe uh, to be a little more comfortable, we should take these faces off Thank and you. we can start talking about a dog's face. Okay. Great illustration. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and wouldn't it be great if we could change our expressions that easily and go from, from a not so happy face into a really happy face? Yes. Because the way the mouth is held and the way the face is held can create emotional states. Mm -hmm. So let's do a little experiment before we start talking about the dogs. Okay. Let's make a frown and let's make ourselves look really worried and unhappy and, mm -hmm. and let's just do this for a while. And do you know what's happening inside your body? I feel down. Yeah, because your body is starting to create the chemicals of emotion that reflect that postural change. And so now let's make a really happy face like, oh, aren't we glad to be here? Yes. I am. That's right. And so now your body is beginning to create the chemicals that reflect a positive emotional image. Mm -hmm. Now, the same thing is true with, with other mammals besides humans. And so when we look at our dogs, we can judge a lot by looking at their faces. And particularly, we can tell their emotional states from looking at their mouth. And I do this all the time in my work. In fact, the thing I watch most in a dog is what is the mouth doing? So let's take a look at these dogs here right now. Sand, good boy. That's a good boy. You turn around. Now, is his mouth open or closed right now? Closed? It's closed, right. So what that tells me about his emotional state is that he's not completely relaxed. Mm -hmm. When dogs have their mouths closed, they're not breathing as deeply as they could. They're often aroused by something. They're concerned about something. Or maybe there's been some kind of a change in the environment that they're concerned about or they're curious about. And so the mouth closes as they attend to that change. And actually, we do the same thing, basically. So what I watch for in a dog is, is the mouth open or closed? And if the mouth is closed, how long does it take for the mouth to open and have the dog breathing normally, with just a little bit of tongue showing and the mouth partly open and the dog taking nice deep breaths? So let me see. Let me see if I can decrease this state of concern that he's in. I'm just going to do a little, little Tellington touch on him. And sometimes we can get this to happen with food, too. Let me just see if I can get him to relax a little bit. Because a relaxed dog is much more predictable and confident. There, you see? You see, that's what we like to see. We like to see that mouth nicely open, just slightly parted, mm -hmm. maybe a half inch to an inch. And we want to see the corners not way far back and not way far forward, just normally hanging open. And we don't want to see any ridges around the mouth. With some dogs, you can see a lot of ridges in their facial area. His mouth, is, his mouth and his face are very smooth right now, so you're not seeing any ridges. And that's an indication that he's pretty relaxed, he's pretty comfortable, he's happy here with us. And now we're going to see maybe a yawn. Huh? Are we going to see a yawn? He just closed his mouth again, didn't he? When I changed the way I was touching him, he closed his mouth again. This is a dog that's not real comfortable with a lot of touching and will often shy away from it. So now I'm doing, OK, there's the mouth open again. But if I continue this for a long period of time, hey, sand, hey, sand, 
Hey, hey. Hey, hey. Hey, hey. Let's see if he'll give us a yawn. He's not giving us a yawn, but there's a lick, okay? Now that lick, there's another one. That's very significant because it's telling me that he's not real comfortable with what I'm doing. And he's just indicated to me with that tongue flick that he's getting kind of stressed out, okay? And this is another thing that I watch with dogs. How often do they flick their tongue mm -hmm. like that? Mm -hmm. That's um, called by some people a calming signal. Okay. It indicates the dog is under stress. It's also called an appeasement signal or a distance increasing signal. It just tells us that the dog is under some stress and then it's up to us to figure out what is that stress and how can we remove it. So now I've stopped petting quite so vigorously and his mouth is nicely open again and that's a very good sign. So we want to be on the lookout for licks and yawns. Okay, there's another tongue flick. There's another one. Okay, because those tell us what emotional state our dog is in. So that's what I watch. Now, does it vary by species yeah. too? So if you have a dog that's got a little more jowly and it doesn't really look like his mouth is open, but it may be. Is it? Some it it does vary by breed somewhat. You know, you get you get these dogs yeah, that I mean species. I don't know. <laughs> dogs, but it, but it could be species as well. You know, so if we have a dog that's called brachycephalic, mm -hmm. which means they have a shortened face like a pug or a Pekingese, mm -hmm. their facial expression is going to look a little bit different. And because these dogs with short muzzles have a lot of trouble breathing sometimes, particularly when it's warm, mm -hmm. you may see their mouths very widely open with their tongues hanging down. And for them, that might be a relaxed state. Okay. It might not, but it's probably going to look different from a dog that has a normally long muzzle. Okay. okay? Now, um, when the mouth is open, and when the mouth is closed, has an effect on other parts of the body as well. Mm -hmm. Did you know that? Not really. Want to do a little experiment with me? Sure. Okay, so what I'd like you to do is close your mouth and put some tension on your jaw muscles. Okay. Yes, I just... And just, mm-hmm. And try to take a deep breath. Okay. Now, part your lips slightly, so that's right, just like that, so you have a nice, relaxed jaw. And now try to take a deep breath. Much easier. Isn't it easier? Much yes, easier. because when you tighten your jaw muscles, you also tighten your neck muscles, and you tighten the muscles through your chest and abdomen, which causes your diaphragm to not be able to expand. And your diaphragm, of course, is this big muscle here that helps your lungs fill with air. So when your diaphragm is not relaxed, you know, it can't expand fully, and so we have difficulty breathing. And what we notice with dogs that have uh, closed mouths all the time is that they don't take deep breaths. They're always breathing from their chest area, and they're often taking these short breaths. That has um, an effect on the rest of the system. It actually affects the acid-alkaline balance in the body, which can affect our immune system and cause us to be more susceptible to disease. So this is why, Talk about yes, like your teeth absolutely, and absolutely. So you know, it's really great for us to get our dogs to open their mouths with a little bit of massage or tea touch or nice long petting strokes, mm -hmm. so that they can be more relaxed and maintain the appropriate acid alkaline balance. They'll be much healthier that way. Wow, that's yeah, amazing. isn't that fun? Mm -hmm. So look at a mouth. If you, if you meet a dog that you don't know, look at the mouth. What's the mouth doing? If the mouth is closed, I think that's a signal that I would probably keep my distance a little bit. Okay. You know, if the mouth is gently open with just a little bit of tongue hanging out, I might try to engage that dog. Mm -hmm. If the mouth is wide open and the tongue is way hanging out, I might give that dog some space. Okay. Now, does the mouth and the tail have any connection whatsoever? They sure do. They absolutely do. And we're going to be talking about tails in a future okay. program. Great. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome.